Well, it picked up a bandsaw. It's a Carolina Tool and Equipment HD10. And I went to check it out. It wasn't in the best shape. It cut really crooked. Um, here, the problem is that these, um, <clears throat> the body of the saw is made out of like eighth inch sheet metal. And so when you tighten that vise, it torques on the, uh, the sheet metal on the body and it distorts it, it'll kind of tweak it. So then after you get uh, some big dude cranking down on it, uh, one time you'll never have a straight cut again because now the saw will uh, The axis that the, the saw comes down on will not be perpendicular to the top of that sheet metal frame, so that's a major flaw with these saws uh, Did a little research um, on these saws before I bought them, but not enough and uh, Sounds like they're, some people say they last for years, and uh, some people say they're a pile of junk, and I can see why, if you can't get a straight cut out of it after one over tightening, that's, that's a major problem, and I checked it out when I bought it, uh, it made probably the most crooked cut I've ever seen, so I decided perhaps foolishly, to use that as a bargaining chip to um, get a lower price. I paid 200 I think that might have been too much, but <laughs> I figure you can fix anything, and uh, we're going we're gonna to see if we can fix this thing up into a good saw. Um, so, stay tuned. Here's a little setup to demonstrate what happens when you tighten this vise. Right now, there's very little tension on this block. Just enough to hold it up. And if we reach in here, put a straight edge across this thing. Focus. Just That's pretty bad already. But if I reach back, Tighten this vise up really good. Okay, so it's about normal tightness, and uh, this thing's going to be, especially since I put this block up so high on the jaws, it should give us a pretty good idea happens here. Look at that. That's horrible. I mean, it was bad before, but horrible. Now it's hard to see, but it's probably I don't know. That's a pretty big gap. Say a 30 second. Which doesn't sound like much, but when it's setting your angle, <laughs> ends up being a lot. Before I said about fixing the previously discussed problems with the saw, I figured that I'd better start out with a a good top end to the saw. So I wanted to go through and uh, fix a few problems, uh, things that I'd noticed and make some adjustments, make sure that the saw, um, as far as the guide rolls, um, the wheels of the saw, the alignment of uh, everything, I wanted to make sure that the top end of the saw was running good because I didn't want to be chasing around an alignment problem uh, with the base of the saw if it might 
actually be a problem with the top end with something some kind of an alignment in the top end of the saw first order of business is I noticed this little eccentric bolt was stripped out um, I didn't know where to find an eccentric bolt or how much it was going to cost so I opted to uh, buy some uh, some bolts and cut off the strip section of this bolt and just weld in a new threaded section I also replaced uh, all the hardware with grade 8 uh, Great eight hardware, nuts, bolts, and washers. Um, the way I knew if I could get it tight without stripping bolts again. Went through and aligned all the guide rules. Um, you can see in this picture I sanded down the top uh, where the the nut sits because the casting wasn't straight, uh, such that if you were to tighten down on that bolt it would try to bend the bolt so uh, that's no good so I just kind of took a little grinder and flattened it out by eye best I could um, went through and um, replaced all the hardware like I said and uh, set my guide rolls to the, the proper clearance for the blade and got those all set up next I noticed that the wheels on the saw we're not in the same plane with each other. Um, the one pictured here happens to have been a little bit too high, a little higher than the other side. So what I did was I ended up putting some washers on the bolts that hold the gearbox. That um, The gearbox is bolted in on the back side of that plate. Um, I just put some washers in between the gearbox and the plate. That uh, push that wheel towards the plate, in effect, um, lowering it, and uh, got them pretty close to being in the same plane with each other. Here, if you look carefully, you can make out the shims that I put um, in between that back plate and the gearbox. While I had the gearbox out, I figured I might as well give it an oil change. Uh, it turned out to be pretty, pretty nasty oil. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully the gearbox will uh, keep going. I replaced it with some gear oil that I had laying around on my shelf from a, a previous oil change, and uh, it's pretty heavy stuff, 85W140. So I don't know what kind of oil that gearbox requires or what it had in it, but um, this is certainly up to the task of running that gearbox plus it has limited slip additive so no. here's to smoky burnouts and finally I got it all back together and running pretty good I put the guides in and then I went for a little test cut again to see if I would made any improvements okay so we got the blade guides set up, they're square. Um, the hydraulic cylinder finally came. It's been installed. Works okay. Works it leaks. I'm not really happy about that. I've spent $125 on that. So uh, about to make our first cut. Still a little too high. You can probably adjust this uh, switch downwards a little bit. Um, yep, yeah. we'll do that. All right, that'll fix it. There we go.
switch scares me. Something's wrong with it. I got electrocuted one time. That's not good. Anyways, let's see what happens. Get that blades and push it back. Yep. <laughs> so the blade's wandering still. Uh, and yeah. No need to put a square on that. You can see how crooked that is. So, I got it fairly well tuned in. The wheels are right. The guides are right. The only other thing is this base. For the next step, I happen to have a, half, a piece of half inch plate laying around. I'm going to cut out a hole in the base of the saw, uh, a big one, and I'm going to fit that half inch plate in the base of the saw uh, and I will be able to adjust the angle of that plate until it matches uh, and, and is parallel to the axis that the saw rotates on and that should allow me to get square cuts but uh, we'll see Here we are, with the first brace welded in. I've done plug welds along the top. And then underneath I did some, some little guys. Just gonna basically short little welds to try and prevent warpage. Last thing I need is for this to become a banana shaped saw. And, uh, that stiffened it up. Now the plan is to cut out the top and uh, put the plate on top and then use the other brace to raise and lower the plate in the backside to get my angle that I need to match the, uh, the swing of the saw blade. So, so far so good.